Research in Computational Science program, otherwise known as RCOMSci, and this podcast is a information session to help you make a decision about whether this might be a program you would, to which you would like to apply. Uh, research in Computational Science is a relatively new R course. It started in the 2008 school year. It's relatively new compared to R Chem and R Physics and R Bio. And it focuses on computational science, which is not computer science, although it has some aspects of computer science. Computational science is also known as modeling and simulation. And what you do here is you create mathematical computer models to solve interesting problems in science. Uh, sometimes you might modify other people's models. Sometimes you might just simply use other people's models, depending on the complexity of your problem. The prerequisites for this research program obviously is an interest in using computers to solve challenging problems. And one of the misconceptions is that you already have to be very skilled at computer programming to participate in this programming uh, in this program. That's not the case at all. Uh, there's no programming experience required. Again, this is a computational science program, not a computer science program, although that again, that's computer science is one part of what we do in this, this program. And it covers all the disciplines. Um, you can come up with a computational science model in the sciences, in mathematics, and in humanities. For example, I had a student a couple years ago who did work in computational linguistics, and she did a built a computational model to predict when uh, a certain set of hieroglyphics had actually been written. So I've had students who've obviously uh, worked in sciences, in medicine, in computational fluid dynamics, in all kinds of, of different areas, but it's basically being able to apply a computer model to some interesting problem, regardless of what the discipline uh, might be. Um, everybody who goes through the program is expected to learn some core skills. Obviously, you'll learn some computational science concepts. You'll learn a variety of modeling tools. You'll learn some basic Unix and Linux. We'll, do, we'll talk about a little bit of research statistics. Uh, we'll do something called scientific visualization. And like everybody who takes a research program, you'll learn how to search the uh, professional literature and to read and evaluate that professional literature. Uh, there's some other opportunities in computational science. Actually, the list is longer now than the one you see here. Uh, in the distance learning program in the fall, there's a very unique course in computational chemistry. It's actually computational quantum chemistry. Uh, in the spring, uh, typically for seniors, uh, there's a course in medicinal chemistry. This is drug design chemistry. There is now a... Um, course in computational biology and bioinformatics, and there's also an uh, introductory course in computational science, most of which you'll get through this, this research program. Uh, some general logistics, uh, meeting periods, uh, it's typically F block for juniors and G block class for seniors. Unlike the other R programs, we meet five days a week for one block. Uh, most of the other R courses meet four days a week for two blocks. And one of the reasons we do that is because uh, the other R courses, sometimes their students need to travel uh, to be able to get access to some of the labs that they might need to do their experimental work. Uh, we don't necessarily need to travel. You can travel, go to Duke or UNC, but we have a different uh, meeting schedule than the other R courses. So you need to think about that when you're planning whether or not you want to apply to, to this program. Uh, it requires about 10 hours a week of effort outside of class. Of course, that number changes depending on where you are in your research and uh, what we happen to be doing that particular trimester or that particular week. Um, and again, there's two aspects to how you are evaluated or graded in this program. Uh, obviously, we I evaluate you on your demonstrated proficiency on the core computational science skills, and then clearly you are evaluated and graded on your original research uh, that you've chosen to do as part of this program. Unlike the other R courses, uh, the research and computational science courses course has 
two tracks. The first track is in computational biology, and this is where we work with the Jackson Lab. This is a mouse genetics, mouse genomics lab, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. And then there's also what's known as the independent track. These are for students who have their own ideas for what they might want to do uh, for computational science research. A little bit about the computational biology track. This is bioinformatics. We work with the Jackson Lab, otherwise known as the Jax Lab. This We work on a um, NIH, or National Institutes of Health, project. So the Jax Lab will be working on some project that has been funded by the NIH. And you work on that project right along with the researchers up there. You do and can control your own uh, research topic, meaning you can choose what part of uh, this, the particular study you might want to do. So, for example, this year we're looking at obesity. Uh, there's lots of different aspects to obesity that, so you are coming up with your own research question and your own topic, but you're doing it within some constraints of what the researchers at the Jackson Lab are doing. Again, this is a very different program logistically and schedule-wise from all the other R courses. This is a uh, mandatory four-trimester course. You start in the spring trimester. We do some, I call that the pre-mester. We do some basic training to get you ready for the JAX Lab. Uh, the JAX Lab program is very difficult, so we get give you a little bit of a head start. And unlike uh, the other R courses, this program continues throughout the entire senior year. You do not finish this program until uh, May of your senior year. Another huge difference here is you don't travel. Um, we meet once a week with uh, directly with we meet directly with the JAX Lab scientists through video conferencing. And these video conferences happen uh, after school. And the past couple of years, they've met Tuesdays from 3.30 to 5 p.m. So if you have conflicts that might preclude you participating in the Tuesday video conference, again, from 3.30 to 5, uh, this would not be the course from you. So sports, extracurriculars, um, other things that you might want to do, uh, if they happen on Tuesdays from 3.30 to 5 p.m., you would be not qualified to participate in this program. This is a very challenging research program. Uh, you have to learn, again, it's all based on uh, the study of some human disease by using mice as models. Uh, you learn some statistics. You learn a lot of genetics, particularly quantitative genetics. And you learn some pretty advanced computing uh, that's um, very challenging. So uh, a, a good research program. The independent track uh, starts the winter trimester and like the other R courses this continues at least through the fall trimester. Uh, in the winter trimester we do some core skill development. You do a lot of journal reading and you develop your proposal. In the spring trimester, you complete your proposal, then you begin your model building or your data collection. Uh, most of the independent track students work at some university during the summer, um, either uh, by staying at school or by working with a uh, lab near your home. Uh, in the fall trimester of your senior year, you continue or complete your data collection and you begin uh, writing your final paper. Uh, the Siemens paper, if you want to submit your work to the Siemens competition, that happens at the end of September or early October. Um, in a winter trimester, you might do a little bit more work. Uh, again, complete your final paper. Um, the Intel competition, that submission is typically mid-November. A lot of the independents uh, submit to both Siemens and Intel. By the way, if you are in the Jackson Lab track, that's not a program that lends itself well to the Siemens or Intel competition. So if you have your heart set on winning $100,000, the Jackson Lab program is not a good one because the Jackson Lab is not on a schedule that supports participation in either Siemens or Intel. But getting back to the independent track, uh, most of our students uh, complete their work in a winter trimester. And some will stick around for the spring trimester to do some more advanced work. The selection process is a very competitive, as they are in all of the R courses. Uh, there's an application for both tracks. 
Uh, you indicate, obviously, preference for which track, and you can only pick one. Um, if you are applying for the independent track, it's helpful to have an idea of what your interest area is. If you have a research question already, that's that will give you a little bit of an advantage. But the, the, the better an idea you have of what uh, problem or what topic you want to pursue, that certainly helps your chances in terms of getting uh, selected. If you're in the computational biology track, um, you need to indicate what your biology background is and what your math background is. It's nice to know what your computer science background is, but again, if you don't have any computer science background, that that's okay. But again, with the with with both the independent track and the comp bio track, if you don't like working on a computer, this is probably not the right program for you. I do have some concerns about extracurriculars and sports. Uh, most research in science and math happens in the afternoons. Uh, there are buses that go to the various university campuses on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, if you're independent track, it's likely you're going to need to be on one of those buses. So if you're trying to play a varsity sport or do lots of extracurriculars that meet in the afternoon, uh, it's really hard to get you scheduled uh, to go meet with your research mentor and do your research uh, work. So I have some concerns, and you need to indicate on your application what your extracurriculars and sports might be. If there's time, and I hope there is, I do like to do interviews. Um, I don't always interview every student. Usually we'll, I'll do a quick uh, evaluation of your application, and then I'll screen, uh, I'll interview the most likely candidates. Uh, the numbers of what I accept in the Jackson Lab program, the Comp Bio Track, um, uh, the past couple of years I've had nine students, and you do work in three groups of three. Uh, the Jackson Lab has given me permission to uh, admit nine students. By the way, there are three other schools across the country that participate in the Computational Biology Jackson Lab program. Uh, for the independent track, I usually take three or four students. Uh, sometimes I'll take more. For example, this year I took five students. Um, I will uh, rarely take more than five students. Three or four is, is a typical number. The application process uh, will be the application will be available online as a uh, Microsoft uh, Word file. Uh, it's going to be due on the posted date. I didn't put a specific date on this podcast, so I can re use this uh, next year and subsequent years. Um, typically, the applications are going to be due a short time after the junior research interest meeting, and I do want the applications printed on paper, not submitted to me electronically, and they will be due at noon on the posted date, and they go into my office, which is uh, Brian248. That's at the far end of the chemistry floor. If you have any questions about the research program, uh, in general, there is a, a web page that has this information on it. Uh, you can also email me at gotwalls at ncssm.edu or talk to me if you see me in the library about the program. It's also advantageous to talk with uh, other students who are in the research program. Uh, our, our research group meets in the library, in the back of the library, back in the mezzanine area, uh, in the new glass enclosed uh, classroom all the way in the back. So again, if you have questions, let me know and hope to see your application on the posted date.